lovely good day. Lovely to be here. Our focus was working together. I've given you a, a link to the Sonswell Festival report, which will tell you a lot about how we interacted and there's lots of lovely photographs. Uh, who are we? Well, we're this little group plus others. <clears throat> and this is a photograph. My, the person on the left is from our Jewish liberal community. Uh, Miru Fitter is is from the Zoroastrian community. I am there as Sacre. Deepak, obviously, I'm sure you all know from the Hindu community. Jean Prescott from the spiritual churches. Uh, <clears throat> Pruparetta, who is Our Lady Godiva. Osman Sheikh from the Coventry Muslim Forum. Uh, Councillor Asha Massey from the Christian Asians in Coventry. And at the back here is a new arrival to Coventry. His name's Avi. And he's bought the um, synagogue uh, in the city and is renovating it. 30 years ago at schools, we spent a lot of time there, so I'm looking forward to it coming back. And this very nice young man is Fred Kratz. He used to work for the Bishop's Office. He now works as a police and crime commissioner on violence reduction. He too is part. Now, we have actually got a couple more members and I couldn't find a photograph fast enough. Um, it's Janie Manton, who is part of the Pagan Group, and Jane Salter, who is a humanist. Uh, Warwickshire Sacre and Coventry Sacre are different in that, that they've got both of those uh, represented in uh, their body. And I'd have to say it's been a, a very fruitful partnership with them as well. Now, for those of you that know Coventry or don't, um, Right in the middle, CV1, we have an area where you will find all our places of worship. And this is a lovely map. I will send you a better one so you can have a look. So you've got my place of worship, the Gondora there. Across the road, you've got the Mandar. This way, you've got the Masjid and then another one there. Um, down here, we've got the Polish church. A little bit further up, we've got the Ukrainian church, we've got the spiritual church around the corner. So we're sort of very holy in that area. Uh, we were originally called uh, the Religious Square Mile, and it was a term coined by the BBC. Um, when they first started to develop RE resources, this was the place you came to to do it. Now, somehow, all of that then connected up with the cathedral and Canon Peter Berry. I was a significant person in my life. Okay. Now, some very interesting things have happened. I'm sorry, I'm just going to go back on. Um, in, the, in the last five years, um, and it's one of them is that the 60-year-olds like me that lived in George Street and um, interacted with a whole range of people because we were multi-faith, multicultural, none of us spoke the same language, but we got on. And none of us had an extended family in this country. So we created one in George Street. So for the first 10 years of my life, I grew up with multi-faith folk working for the benefit of the children in their area. They said, um, I know that because I made lots of cups of tea. I was very much the dutiful daughter. Um, so, just, And we either met in my house or the Godora or the church called the Little Church, uh, the Methodist Church on Little Church Street. Now, for, we've come together again, those 60-year-olds, and sort of been quite concerned about how faith groups are portrayed in the media. And it's not our narrative, it's the media's narrative. So one of our underlying aims, if you like, is to prove not just to the people of Coventry, but to the United Kingdom, uh, although our families come from different parts of the world, we may be different religions, we do have loyalty to Coventry in the first instance because it's our city, it feeds us and it nurtures us. And we do have um, good relationships between each of us and we're going to sort of sell it. Now, the other thing that's happened is suddenly our 30 to 40-year-olds have managed to uh, win the elections in our places of worship. And uh, not only are they willing to work with each other, they're willing to work across the faith. So one of the things we started off was doing policies around safeguarding health and safety, risk assessments, um, and the Sikh community of Coventry with help, lots of help from the Muslim community of Nuneaton. And because we crossed the two 
uh, authorities, we've got a lot of help that we can get. Alongside that, we've managed to link up with various politicians. Our deputy lead, uh, Councillor Abdul Khan, four or five years younger than me, um, was taught by um, Miru Fitter when she was a librarian. So that connection's come up. He's very interested. We have an amazing Lord Mayor and his wife, Mr and Mrs McNicholas. Um, and it's quite interesting because they say they are not people of faith, but they're probably the most moral couple that I know. But again, um, you know, represent Coventry and cheers. Two of our MPs, Tewo Watabi and Zara Sultana, have supported us in every single um, item that we've done and made it very obvious. So the optics, when you're looking at it from a newspaper point of view, uh, look quite interesting. OK, we've managed to connect up with West Midlands Combined Authority. Andy Strait came to our faith event. Um, Sacre, Coventry Muslim Forum. As I said, that's how we've come to our steering group. I want to keep it quite brief because um, I can give you the paperwork to read. We came together because we had the same interest. And I'm thinking about pre-COVID. We had an item called, that we affectionately call Busgate. National Express decided to get rid of a bus stop to the religious square mile, which meant our elders had to walk through a very unpleasant area to get to place of worship. And... Uh, you know, we were just a bit concerned about their safety. So we brought it up at what we call the community forum. I believe most people call them the independent advisory groups um, and our partners in the initial sense were the police. We found a couple of more councillors to help us and then invited National Express. It took us three years, but that bus stop is back in use and our elders now can go from A to B safely. And that was actually the thing that was important. Now, through doing that, we actually re-engaged. The elders re-engaged, the 60-year-olds. But what was happening is the 30 and 40-year-olds were seeing it. And we were then sharing our stories of when we were young, when faith groups more co um, obviously worked together. And the only reason we stopped working together wasn't we hated each other's guts. Our parents got good jobs, had more money, could buy better housings, move out of the area. Uh, and that was it. The other major event was actually the New Zealand mosque and the shooting of those young children and families. I, I, I think we were absolutely shocked that it could still happen in this day and age and immediately engaged with our Muslim community first because we have members of the Bengal Gepteshi community in Coventry, we're very worried about their families and did what we could uh, to help but more importantly we developed what we call the safety and security <clears throat> group invited the police to come and talk to us and at the time I believe the home office were providing funding um, to improve the safety and security in places of worship now what we did which was probably slightly different is had everybody in the same room and actually did an analysis of our respective places of worship and we felt there were three or four masjids that were more vulnerable than the other places of worship and agreed that only those three would apply for the funding so that we're not fighting against each other for the same amount of money. And that again, as I said, led to more improved relationships. We've done some fun things just before um, the City of Culture, we paired up with the Godiva Awake Trust in the city and produced a YouTube video. Do go and have a look at it. It's called Three Amazing Days in Coventry, where the Sikh community, black churches and Hindu community worked together and took their arts to the city centre for the first time in my lifetime. Um, and we worked with Dean John as part of the cathedral's work on peace and reconciliation and Bishop Christopher. Um, you will know that for a short while before COVID, there was a bit of talk that the Garban was the equivalent of a knife. Now, if you're a Sikh, that's so offensive, it's unbelievable. So we felt we needed to educate. Equally, our black churches felt that their sons were being accused of being involved in knife crime. So we thought, well, actually, this would be a good time to show solidarity and do the opposite. So our black churches had a lovely choir. Uh, we did Gatka, which is Sikh martial arts, with our Garbans in the city centre. The police were great supporting us with taking things there and bringing them back and eventually introduced us to a group called the Violence Reduction Team and 
we're our work, if you like, with the violence reduction team is isn't that the Garban is um, a weapon of destruction, but it's a tool of honor and you don't use it in that way. Okay. Now from there, as we got into COVID, you can see we've got COVID-19, we've got vaccinations, uh, opening and closing of places of worship, PPE. We knitted a lot of uh, um, clothes for premature babies because our hospitals were saying everybody's making PPE and we haven't got enough for them. Um, we're really concerned about domestic violence across the faith group. So we managed to get some funding and actually make some packs with information um, put in a very subtle way. We opened up health clinics, um, spoken to um, our youngsters in our communities to say, you're doctors, nurses, we need your help. We need you to talk to us about how we deal with. And then our partners for this were Public Health England, National Health Service, and then known charities like Langer Aid, Islamic Relief and Salvation Army. And we deliberately went for um, uh, charities that had quite a big profile and obviously the local authority. In fact, we were meeting them on a very regular basis. So I said, there's a lovely picture of our three important ladies in our city, Tewo, Sultan, uh, Zara Sultana and our Lady Mayor. And as part of it now, we're regularly on the radio so that we talk about the positive impact on faith groups and the work they do. Um, and I'm absolutely really pleased and we will take that further. They said, I will send you Deepak's PowerPoint where he talks about our action plan for sacred space so you can see how we build, we built up the strategic side and um, obviously the Swanswell report. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.